There's so many tools available to make music on an iPad these days. Uh, one of the best ones, I think, is Logic Pro. If you are already familiar with something like GarageBand, which is the free version of Logic, essentially, visually they're very similar, they, they work similarly. If you're familiar with GarageBand, then going from GarageBand to Logic is gonna be really easy and you're gonna have a whole world of things open up for you. If you've never used GarageBand before, Logic is still very approachable and I think one of the easiest DAWs to get started with out of all of the ones that are available. Super intuitive, really easy to look at. You're not shown just a, a massive screen of parameters and things to click on. Uh, Logic is super easy to use and we're gonna look at that right now. So just to talk about what I'm gonna be using real quick, uh, I am gonna be using a mouse to navigate around my iPad screen. You don't need to do that. I'm really just doing it for demonstrative purposes so you can see what I'm clicking on and what I'm moving. In fact, normally I would just use an Apple Pencil to make music. I do actually recommend getting an Apple Pencil if you're gonna be making music on an iPad. I have an iPad mini, so the screen is very small and a lot of times these extra apps and effects and things have really tiny knobs and dials and sliders and things and I have kind of big fingers so having to do that with my fingers is not the most convenient thing and that's where the Apple Pencil really comes in handy. It is an investment to get the pencil. It is not necessary but I think it helps a lot and it's just going to be a really considerable quality of life improvement. Another thing that I own that I'm not going to be using for this video or for any of the videos in the series probably unless I get a, a request to do so. Uh, just a, a MIDI controller. I'm not going to be using that. I'm just going to assume that you don't have one. And I forgot to turn my light on. Look at this tealy color. Like the Apple Pencil, having a MIDI controller is not necessary. This is gonna make things a lot easier. You're gonna be able to do things with one that you would have a harder time doing without. It's not impossible to make music without a MIDI controller keyboard of some type. I do recommend getting one eventually, but there's so much you can do with just drawing and stuff in the piano roll, which we'll get to, or tapping some of the pads on here, or there's even an on-screen keyboard that you can use once we get to that point. Let's take a look at Logic and start making some ambient music. I'm gonna to try to keep stuff in Logic as much as possible. Uh, I'm not gonna be using too many third-party apps to begin with. I want you to just get a feel for how to make stuff using what is already available in Logic. So we're gonna start there. I am, however, gonna be using a sample pack from here at Field Tone Audio. It is our most recent one. It's called Drift One. Uh, it's 75 roughly minute long loops, um, just textured sounds that you can use. It's $5 right now at fieldtoneaudio.com. If you don't want to spend $5, there is a free version called Drift One Fragments. It is 10 of those samples that you can stretch and chop and mangle and pitch and reverse, whatever you want to do, use it in any project. So the sounds that I'm going to be using in this episode are going to be from that. You can use whatever sounds you'd like to use when you make your music, obviously. <laughs> uh, it's up to you. But that's the source material that I'm going to be using. So here we have just the regular Logic Pro screen. I started a new template up here. Uh, there's a few different things. This drop down menu will show you your project settings. And once we get everything set up in here and running, I'm actually gonna make this Logic Pro template available for members of my Patreon, including free members. So if you wanna get this Logic template and the way that it's gonna look by the end of this video, I'll have that available for free members of the Field Tone Audio Patreon. Uh, you can join that at the link in the description. Make sure to join that and grab that for free. There are paid tiers available at the Field Tone Audio Patreon, so if you are so inclined, you want to support financially and get access to some extra freebies, you can do that. Or I guess they're not really freebies if you're paying for them, but, but you get some extra bonus things if you are a paid member of the Field Tone Audio Patreon, but I share a lot of stuff for free, and this will be one of them. So join the Field Tone Audio Patreon for free to grab this at the end of the episode. So here you can just rename this project. Let's make this the, I do, uh, I have my keyboard as well that I'm using. FTA ambient template. So that'll be what that's called. And then right here next to that, these buttons here, these are called transport controls. So anytime you hear somebody talk about transport controls, they're talking about these buttons. So this one here on the left will take you all the way back to the beginning of this timeline down here. Then you have your play, 
you have record and you have loop. This will turn this yellow bar on and off. So if you just wanted to loop a certain section of your song over and over, that's how you would do that. And then this button is actually new, this one that's gray right now. This was added in a recent Logic update. This is really cool. This is called, what do they call it? Flashback recording? Flashback capture. So that's called flashback capture. So if, let's say you were playing a MIDI keyboard and you were um, just jamming and something sounded really cool, but you weren't recording, you can hit flashback capture and it'll pull up that MIDI for you. Next, you have your timeline settings. So this is gonna show you what bar you're at. Um, and then to the right of that, it'll show you in time, what time you're at in your project. So if you're recording at 120 beats per minute, bar 31 is gonna be a minute into your track. So that'll change depending on the tempo of your track, obviously. Then right here, you can click on this, you can change the tempo of your song like this. You can just type in a number. You can do this up and down. You can tap in a tempo. And that'll get really granular with what your tempo is. I highly recommend just rounding up or rounding down and doing 136 or 137 as opposed to 136.4659. Um, that just makes things pretty difficult down the line. I'm not saying never do that. There are, there's really no rules in making music. There are a lot of like best practices and things that you'll develop over time that are just make it easier for your specific workflow. But I mean, just do whatever sounds good. It's, it's up to you. It's your music, it's your journey, it's your expression. There are no rules. I would recommend, is, is how I'll say that, just setting this at like 136 or 135 instead of doing all those decimal numbers. It'll make your life easier down the road. But we're gonna do 120 because a lot of the ambient music that I make doesn't really have a tempo. The tempo of the project is 120, but I do a lot of stuff that doesn't have a rhythm or percussion or, or drums or really anything like that. I do a lot of stuff that is just textural and, and ambient. In a future episode of the series, I'll show you how to do stuff that has a beat and like a kick and a snare and things like that and would still be ambient. For now, I'm just gonna get you started with making music in Logic. Right here, we have our automation lanes, which we can talk about that later because automation is very good in all types of music and it's a good thing to learn how to do. To add a sample, uh, down here in the bottom left, there is that music icon. I'm gonna click on that, and that'll take you out to your file browser. At the very bottom, I have a sample folder, and then here you can click on this and add your own folders. I already have two Field Tone Audio sample packs in here, Dust One and Drift One. So we'll go to Drift One, and we'll click and drag this onto the timeline. So let's pull this to the beginning, and we'll hit play. It's a little loud in my hair, in my ear. <clears throat> so you have a couple different settings for what your cursor is going to do. Um, here we have it set to trim. So if you adjust the length of your audio, it'll just trim your audio. Then you have loop. So if you go all the way to the end and you extend it, this will just loop your audio for as far as you want that to go. Then you have scissors right here. And you would just like click where you want to do that and then drag down with the scissors and that'll cut out your audio. And then with this final one, you can stretch the audio, which will just stretch it and make it longer. Super easy. That does affect the way that the audio sounds. So the longer that the audio is, you're gonna get a little bit more digital artifacting. So it's not gonna sound as clean as it does just as a normal piece of audio, but you might want that. And you could accentuate that with some EQ moves and it can sound really cool, but we're just gonna leave it the way that it is supposed to be. So let's jump in, let's do some effects. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna stick with stuff that is native to Logic, so you don't have to download anything extra. You can just learn the way that Logic works right out of the box. As you can see, I do have a bunch of other effects, but we're gonna stick with the Apple ones. So a move I like to do a lot with ambient music is put on a filter. The stock Logic filter has a couple different options. You got cutoff, which is just gonna do like an EQ sweep. You got resonance, which is gonna just add sounds like that wherever you are in that filter sweep. And then they have fatness, which kind of just makes it rounder. That's a new one to me. Not every filter is gonna have fatness. <laughs> and then this one's got stereo spread.
And this one's also got some modulation. So you can add an LFO. So this could add some really interesting stuff to your samples. If we pull the resonance out, because that's adding that weird sound. I mean, I'm going to get lost in this. This is already really cool. And let's add another effect. So this filter sounds really cool. Let's add some reverb. Can't go wrong with reverb. There's some really good stock reverbs in Logic. Chromaverb is a lot of fun. Here's all your parameters for that. Don't underestimate the power of the stock plugins in whatever DAW you end up using. They are so good and you don't have to spend sometimes hundreds of, some of these things cost hundreds of dollars, which is crazy. Learn what you can do with what you already have and then make purchases to solve problems is what people will say. And I do agree with that. If you decide that the reverb that you have already isn't good enough, then buy something. If you decide that the EQ that you have doesn't do a certain thing the way that you would like it to, then buy something. But more often than not, I will go for a stock plugin before I reach for something that I've purchased. So I just like don't really buy plugins anymore. There definitely are some effects that Logic can't do, like granular stuff, although it is getting better at that. And we could look at that later. So that's a really good way to make uh, just a pad sound. One of my favorite things in Logic that they've added is this chroma glow distortion, which is just, I use it all the time. I use it on desktop, I use it on here on iPad. If you hold down on one of these boxes, you can rearrange them. So I'm gonna put the distortion after the filter. And I'm gonna turn loop on, like we were just talking about earlier. So this is just gonna loop the audio. So let's go into Chroma Glow. You can do that by double clicking, and then we can expand it by sliding this up and down. So this is gonna be an overdrive saturator. This is gonna make it sound distorted, and I want that. You can see the UI will give you some clues into how it's behaving. Chroma Glow, like I said, it's a fantastic plugin and effect. I don't even entirely understand everything that it does just yet. I haven't taken the time to dive in. I really just pick a couple of presets and adjust to what I like, but you can, I mean, you can bypass below a certain frequency. So if you only want certain frequencies to be affected by the overdrive, you can do that. There are super expensive plugins that, I say super expensive, but again, trying to keep everything focused here. There are much more expensive plugins that can do what this does, but this is included. One that comes to mind is FabFilter Saturn, which I own on iPad. I don't own it on desktop because on iPad it was like 20 bucks and on desktop I think it's like 150. I mean, let me find out for sure. Okay, it's only $65 right now. That's a lot better than I thought. And actually, it must be on sale because B&H has it. I guess not. Why is it 120? It's $140 through B&H? why what this plugin does is fantastic and i highly recommend using that so i have that after the filter and if we want to put that before the filter we can do that too here's how it sounds before the filter but i personally like it after the filter because i want it distorting the audio that's going through the filter instead of having the audio distorting and then being filtered. Does that make sense? Lastly, let's add a delay. I love the tape delay. If you click next to the name of the plugin, it'll pull up the preset menu. So we can do like a lo-fi setting. Let me turn off reverb so you can hear really what this is doing. I'll close the browser. Turn that off. I'm actually gonna turn off this LFO the audio back in cool so now we hear more of the original sample sound so this is really going to color the sound and kind of make it sound like a cassette almost which you can also do through the eq taking off the highs and the lows is a really good way to simulate that cassette sound and then just finding a good resonant frequency to kind of lift so 
That's how you can fake a cassette sound really easily. And then we can bring the filter down, put the distortion back on, put the verb back on, and usually you wanna put reverb after delay. That way the delay is going into the reverb and the reverb is expanding that. If you have the delay after the reverb, the delay is going to add the repeats, like the reverb is going to be delayed. <laughs> which can also be cool. Again, there's no rules. Let's bring some of that audio back in. I feel like this needs a bigger pad. Let's find a preset in here. Cave sounds cool. So there we have just a basic pad. And now before we finish this, let's take another one of these. So now we have two of the same sample. Let's click on the second icon down here, which will bring up the menu for this region. Go into here, go to general, and we'll transpose. Let's make this go up a f seven semitones, which makes it a fifth. make that even bigger sounding, but kind of put it underneath here. Give it more distortion. Just to have these sounds really playing well with each other. We can take the, take the delay off. Open up some of the sound. And there we go, we're well on our way to an ambient track using the iPad and one sample. I could already just sit and listen to this. <laughs> Let me know what you want to see me talk about in the next episode. I hope this was helpful for just like a general overview of how to use Logic and get started with some sounds. Happy creating, we'll talk soon.